This podcast is brought to you by UPS. Now one of the world's largest package delivery companies, UPS started out as a small business too. So they have the expertise and experience to make international shipping easy for your business. Find out more at www.ups.com forward slash SMB. Hello and welcome to Small Business Snippets, the podcast from smallbusiness.co.uk. I'm your host, Anna Jordan. Today we have Tej Lalvani and Sam Jones. One is CEO of Vita Biotics and Dragon on Dragon's Den. The other is an entrepreneur who, according to Tukur Suleiman, gave one of the best pitches he's ever seen in the den. Sam went into the den looking for £60,000 in exchange for 10% equity of his internet browser company, Generate. Wowed by the pitch, Tukur Suleiman and Peter Jones teamed up to invest in the entrepreneur, leaving Tej and Deborah Meaden with cash in their pockets. Tej sought out Sam after the show, becoming one of a group of high profile investors to back the firm. And after four years on the show, Tej will be stepping back from Dragon's Den later this year to focus on growing Vita Biotics. We'll be talking about making a pitch from both sides of the den. Hi guys, how are you getting on? Hi Anna, how are you? Yeah, doing really, really well, thanks. Awesome, good to be here this afternoon. Thanks for having us, Anna. Of course, of course. Right, we've got quite a bit to get through, as you've heard in the intro, so I'll start with you, Sam. Um, talk us through the process of going on Dragon's Den and anything that stood out to you particularly. Well, wow. I mean, what an experience. It'd be hard to put that into 30 seconds, but really quickly, I'll start with what's happened since and then I'll jump, I'll jump back to what happened during. So since Dragon's Den, the reaction has been incredible. So the pitch went viral um, with about 20 million views on Facebook, another 5 million views on LinkedIn. We were averaging a new download every 10 seconds for about seven or eight weeks. And then off the back of that, more than 30 different press outlets wrote about us. And then we used this momentum to raise a modest round of funding, which we were super fortunate to be able to include, of course, Tej Lalvani and bring him on board alongside people like Tiny Temper, the rapper, and Harry Redknapp, the football manager. So it's been a whirlwind since Dragon's Den, which is a amazing but then going back to it and to the pitch god i mean this was a hell of an experience so i think that we all know from watching it on tv that when you walk through those doors and you come out of that lift anything can happen and of course from the entrepreneur's perspective you hardly sleep the night before because you're just so nervous so you're standing there in this lift light-headed and the butterflies are multiplying in your stomach and you're trying your best just to hold it together but then your head's getting noisier you can't even remember your opening line and you're just trying to tell yourself to breathe and then there's that moment where the doors open and you walk out of the lift and it's total silence you see the dragon's sitting in front of you just like you do on tv and you even hear the echo of your own footsteps as you're walking out to that mark on the floor to start your pitch so i mean i think that's tough no matter who you are that's tough but that's how all of the entrepreneurs start on dragon's den Mm, but it's amazing because you looked so cool and calm when you were on the tv i mean it's, it's hard to believe that all of this was rushing through your head at the time Oh, yeah. I mean, I think you're standing in front of these five incredible characters that we've all seen on TV for so long. And of course, you know what each one of those investors can bring to your business. So I think the real art is being able to calm your mind, take that breath and then go in and communicate your pitch really clearly. Yeah, absolutely. And talk us through the the stages before that, because I'm sure people who are listening or watching might be thinking, oh, maybe someday I'll go on Dragon's Den. Sure. So in terms of preparing, well, I think the, the thing that I did really simply was I just practiced the pitch probably a hundred times, probably more than a hundred times. So I knew it inside out. Of course, I watched a lot of Dragon's Den as well, and I imagined answering every question. But then yeah. more than that, I just knew knew my business. I know why I started Generate. I know what we want to achieve. And then really the challenge was just keeping that mental clarity so I could communicate that to these guys uh, when I was standing there. Amazing. And Tej, what were your first impressions when Sam walked into the den? Well, look, as an investor, as a dragon, you look for a couple of things in terms of what they're pitching and the entrepreneur themselves. And so when, you, when you're investing, obviously, 
the pitch is important to understand the clarity of it. And sometimes, you know, entrepreneurs don't communicate what it is. And of course, what, uh, you know, Sam presented um, is not an easy thing to, to try and grasp in layman's terms. So he did a great job of doing that firstly. And then secondly, is the, you know, the opportunity you see in the business. Did it seem, it seemed a very strong opportunity, a potential to disrupt uh, certain things. And the other point uh, you look at is you ask questions to the entrepreneur and you see how they respond accordingly. And so the questions I asked Sam, he responded very quickly, promptly, and dealt with the issue because sometimes entrepreneurs may deflect the question if they, they, they can't answer it. So he took on board some of those points and concerns I had and very clearly went through them and said, okay, that's a potential risk. This is, you know, this is a problem. This is a solution for it. And so that, that impressed me. And I think, um, you know, just the space as well, uh, the tech space I was interested in. So really there's a couple of things that you look at and it sort of ticked all the boxes in mm -hmm. my head as a, as a potential investment. Uh, so, so I thought it was a fantastic pitch, yeah. Amazing. And I suppose, do you have anything to add to that as to what other entrepreneurs who may consider going on Dragon's Den can learn from Sam's pitch? Well, I think, you know, um, Sam has, uh, as he said earlier on about practicing and, um, and watching Dragon's Den, so few people actually mm -hmm. come and really watch the episodes because everything is pretty much there. And you can see how sometimes it can go completely on a tangent because other entrepreneurs have not prepared, they've not been transparent, and you can get a complete, complete grilling versus having four or five offers sometimes. So I think that, that is important preparation. Of course, nerves hit you and some people can manage them better than others, uh, but, um, and, and therefore the dragons will be lenient if you do forget certain things because there is, there is that pressure on national television. Yeah. However, it's how you deal with it and, just understanding, have you been actually prepared? And the other important thing is that understanding the, the full aspect, all, all of your business, the in and outs of it. Um, you know, sometimes the entrepreneurs say, I don't really do that, it's not my role, but it is your business, your entrepreneur. You need to understand everything about from the finances to the marketing, to the competitors. Um, and, and that is very important as, a, as, a, as someone who wants to pitch to Dragon's Den. Mm -hmm. and, um, and be clear for what you, what you want and what you're asking for. You know, they just sometimes come on, I want this amount of money. What are you going to do with that money? How's it going to work? And what do you really want from a dragon? Um, so the more clear the entrepreneur is, the better, the more concise. And really try and explain your business in simple terms and very quickly. People just sometimes go on for now and you're like, and, you're, and, and half the time is the questions about trying to understand what does your business do? Um, so really that is an important part get that sorted out and use the other time to try and get the investment and negotiate the deal that you want from the dragons. Yeah. And I suppose some, it's not even sometimes on the show because you've got the due diligence then to go through afterwards off camera. Of course. Yeah. I mean, so that's a different process altogether. Uh, but I mean, in the den, the, the idea is you have an intent to do a deal with the entrepreneur. Uh, and of course, during due diligence, uh, these can you know, pop up the BBC you know, you do a certain amount of due diligence, but as an investor and as a shareholder, you, there's things about shareholders agreements that you need to look at, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the bank, the finances, is it correct? Are they, is there more debt than what was, what was given in, in the show? And, uh, you know, based on that, entrepreneurs have different, because you know, by the time you do a deal, it could take three, four months and the situation may change for an entrepreneur as well. Yeah. So the, they're all aspects that get involved, but by and large, you know, we try and do every single deal that, uh, that, that we agree in the den. Great. And Sam, coming back to you. So when you were having your discussion with the wall, what, what was that like? What was going through your head? Well, to be honest, I think that was quite a surreal moment because I'd spent so much time, effort and energy in preparing to try to get to that stage that when that happened, uh, there was this kind of rush of, um, of emotion and adrenaline where I think I was so pleased that when I asked to go to the back, I genuinely... I think you can see on the piece that was broadcasted on TV, I have this big grin across my face because I'm there thinking, blimey, what a, what a great place to be and reflecting kind of momentarily on the journey up until there before then, of course, um, thinking, okay, what are the offers in front of me and, and how shall I go back and handle this? So yeah, it was a, a fantastic moment, um, really. 
it must be nerve wracking for yourself, Tesh, because you've you've put forward an offer, but you know, you must just be sitting there in that moment thinking, oh, what's he going to decide? Is he going to take it? Who's he going to go with? Absolutely. I mean, it's um, it's always a tense moment. And mm. um, that's the fun of the show, because you you are competing against other dragons genuinely for investment. Mm. And it's about communicating what value you can add uh, as an entrepreneur. Um, to help the journey and grow the business at the same time. Yeah. And uh, also understanding really what's important from the entrepreneur side um, and trying to communicate that at the same time. And of course, then you have the flexibility of uh, percentage investment, whether you offer more money for the same percentage or whether you prepare yeah. to take less equity for the same amount of money, those levers are there. Um, and, uh, and then you just see what happens, of course. Uh, ultimately, the entrepreneur decides, they make the decision and, uh, you know, uh, you, you win deals, you lose deals all the time, and then it's uh, it's the next one. Yeah, it must have felt uh, on this particular occasion quite uh, quite like you yeah. Well, 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 what, what it felt like was that I, I should have provided free office space. No, took her finally shifted uh, it. <laughs> next time, yeah. The, <clears throat> so it's um, yeah, of course, you know, it, 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 it is disappointing, but then. But equally, as I believed in, in Sam's vision and what he was doing, um, I, you know, we did reach out afterwards, uh, got in touch and, uh, and subsequently made the investment because um, I thought uh, I could add great value to the business. I thought this was a great opportunity. And so, so it, it worked out that way. Great. I mean, you say that you've never sought out uh, an entrepreneur that's appeared on the show before. Um, how did you go about that in seeking out Sam? Um, well, yeah, previously, if I've lost deals um, in the den or they haven't gone through, then usually I just I didn't get it for a particular reason, so I leave it. But here mm. I thought that it was uh, an important decision. And at the time, you know, maybe Sam wanted to choose two people. Um, and then I thought that this was, you know, the more I thought about it, it was, it was a great opportunity. So I uh, contacted Sam and um, obviously through the other dragons as well, Tuka and Peter who invested. And um, they were very happy to have uh, me on board as well. And then we had a discussion and worked out a deal that was, uh, you know, uh, great for everyone. Today's opportunities for your business are borderless. As a global shipping provider, UPS is here to help your business capitalise on growing local and international markets and reach new customers across its global network. Find out more at www.ups.com forward slash SMB. So talking post-pitch, um, what, what's in the future for Generate, especially in terms of managing customer expectation around uh, what kind of rewards they can get, for example? Yeah, so I mean, right now, the future is really, really exciting. So we're growing incredibly fast still. So um, thousands and thousands of new users downloading Generate all the time. And yeah. um, we're scaling the team, of course, we had four people um, about 90 days ago. So when Dragon's Den aired, there was just four of us. Now we've tripled to about 11 or 12 of us, there'll be 15 of us once we finish this hiring spree. So increasing internal capability is a big key thing here. Um, additionally, we're working on our mobile app to get this developed and out in the world. We've got over 50,000 people on the waiting list for the app already, which is fantastic. Um, so from our side, it's full steam ahead. We're chasing down these opportunities. I mean, it really feels like we've captured the zeitgeist in empowering yeah. people to control and earn from their data. Um, so we're just running full speed ahead with that, really. And how do you scale up at such a rate as you are without over expanding or taking any of those kind of risks? Well, I think the first thing is the reason it's amazing to have people like Tej and Peter and Tuka and some of our other shareholders too, who have also been in, in similar fast growth businesses, mm -hmm. is that these guys have gone through it before. And there is a, a tried and tested playbook, particularly if I look at one of our investors, who's the former CEO of Spotify, he's been there with the explosive tech growth. So asking our shareholders and our board is, is always a great area to get guidance from. But then, of mm -hmm. course, the other thing is, one result of explosive growth is that, as you're kind of saying, Anna, you need to scale up to meet your consumer's expectations. And there's always a little bit of a time lag in there. And it's a positive problem, but of course it is a teething pain that you need to get through. So to give you some context, we can receive 
over a thousand emails, DMs or messages every day from users and new users who are getting in touch. Mm. So on Friday, when I left the office, we were down to zero in our inbox. On Monday, when the team came back, that's today, we're at over 1700. So of course, there is this period where we need to put in place uh, structures and capabilities and manpower that will enable us to respond quicker and more efficiently and more effectively. Um, but we're getting there. So it's exciting, as you can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And Tej, I can imagine your unique insight has, has been invaluable here as well in terms of scaling up in a sustainable way. Absolutely. I mean, you know, what we like to do is work with Sam and see all the, all the things that he need, all the things mm -hmm. that he needs for the business to help grow it. And we provide it essentially as a, as a wish list and, uh, whether it's opening doors or contacts or help on strategy or advice, um, you know, we're available here to be able to help them grow the business because we all, all believe in the mission equally to, uh, because it's, it's, it's a movement as uh, Sam was talking about, and um, it's a lot more important than just monetary. It's actually changing the game, how people are able to control their data and monetize uh, and monetize from it. Uh, so coming back to a more general topic, uh, Tej, you are very active on social media. Um, you often ask your um, your followers for tips and what their priorities are, what their business goals are. Um, do you have you ever seen an example of a bit of business advice or a mantra that's been presented to you that's made such an impression on you that you've adopted it yourself? Yeah, I mean, uh, with social media, I enjoy interacting with. Um, with, with all the followers and uh, I try and give bits and tips of advice that uh, that I've learned along the way and um, you know there, there's many that can apply to different people and it's great to hear feedback from how it's helped change people or given them the push they needed to set up their business and um, you know take decisions that need to be done that may be difficult so you know in, in terms of advice I think the what I try and follow is that um, there are a couple of principles in, in my life. One is that as a person, I always want to learn and grow all the time. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and number two is if you you want to do something instead of a business, you just have to get started and do it. Because a lot of the time people try and wait for either the perfect opportunity or the perfect idea. And that's really hard to do because it doesn't exist. Because most usually what happens is when you come up with an idea, what you end up with is quite different to what you started with. So. Mm -hmm um i think it's always an evolving thing a business so if you have something just go for it and see what happens um people have that hesitation um and then you know i believe today's world when you're setting up a business it's always important to focus on a niche because there's no point trying to be everything to everyone um you'd rather be great at, at something in particular which no one else can beat you at um than, than trying to provide something for everyone that's slightly better than everybody else uh, because, uh, yeah, so th those are the essential principles. I mean, you know, quick tips, I'd say, uh, when it is, when it comes to setting up a business and, you know, a lot of the time when people set up businesses, they, uh, they, they imagine how it's going to be, but it's, it's a lot of firefighting, a lot of problem solving throughout the way, as long as you're prepared to it. And my wife set up her business as well recently. And that's the thing I told her and she, you know, she, she realizes that's that's exactly what it is. There's always there's always issues, just sort of always challenges. Yeah. Um, they could be small, they could be big, but it, that that's what your day is. And it's about, despite all that, how do you grow? How do you, you know, exponentially build your business at the same time? Yeah, I mean that's also why, as far as you can, you should be working on your business, not in your business, so that you yeah. can help drive it forward. Um, similar question to you, Sam. What's the best piece of business advice you've ever been given? Oh, I've been given so much amazing advice that it'd be difficult to select one one piece now, but something that I can tell you or, or tell the listeners, which I think might be helpful if they're ever looking to pitch for investment or go on Dragon's Den is that I think the biggest variable that will impact the outcome is how you think about yourself when you go into that situation. And what I mean by that is that you need to start by reminding yourself that you're not singing for your supper. Never stand hat in hand asking for money because that's the quickest way to turn someone off. Instead, 
I think that you've got to believe that you're sharing a secret with the investor. So you're telling them about an opportunity that they're not aware of. You're pulling away the curtain and unveiling a hidden truth that's been in front of their eyes all along. And if they're lucky, you might be willing to invite them on the journey with you. Now, how much more exciting is that? So the tip that I would give is remember that you're sharing a secret. You're not singing for your supper anytime that you're meeting with investors or asking for investment. I think it's Henry Ford who said this quote. He said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Because really it's, it's in the belief in your mind. And if you think you can't do it, then you're right. You won't be able to do it. But if you think you can and you want to do it, you know, nearly everything's possible. Well, that seems like a great point to end. So I'd like to thank you both for coming on. Thank you, Anna. It's been uh, great. Uh, and thank you for having us. I um, hope that was useful. Oh, of course. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. Thanks, guys. You can find out more about Generate at generateads.com and more about Tej at tejlalvani.com. You can also visit smallbusiness.co.uk for more articles on perfecting your investment pitch. Remember to like us on Facebook at Small Business Experts, follow us on Twitter at Small Business UK, all lowercase, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, linked in the description. Until next time, thank you for listening.